probably be um, local bloggers who are blogging in their own language. But, but as I've sort of discussed before, um, we have a lot of our readers actually coming from outside. Um, people who are interested in Asia, who are not necessarily based here, but who are very interested in the culture and the, the arts and the designs of, of Asia. Um, and for them, you know, I think this is just a way for them to get that sort of window. So the, the bit that I don't understand is if you've got all these people coming from America or Australia or Sweden or whatever, yeah. wouldn't you want to sell stuff to them as well? They're, they're on your site. Are you not going to sell stuff to them as well? You're just going to say, maybe hey, well, here's, some, here's some nice content. Yeah, maybe you will. Maybe you will. <laughs> <laughs> In the business plan. Yes. Okay. So, look, there, there, there are many, many ways that we can build this out. What I'm doing originally now, like I said, um, the site's only been live for about seven months now. So it's still early days. Um, I'm not taking on advertising yet. I'm not building out and focusing on other things other than the core, which is actual content, because I want to make sure that we get this right. Um, and are you getting any support from the startup community here? You know, now there's lots of, I don't know, like 20 co-location spaces, and there's the sea angel people and all that. Are you seeing, are you seeing they're coming and helping you? Um, I probably haven't reached out, to be honest with you. Again, I'm not really looking for any investors at this point. Obviously, I don't just mean from an investor people. perspective. You know, there's a lot of people out there trying to push, you know, Hong Kong startups. Yeah. So. Um, I mean, last week I was speaking at Cocoon, which is one of the co-working places in Hong Kong, um, who invited me to, to talk about freelancing and, and things there. Um, so definitely, there, there, there are ways there. But we're doing a lot more collaborations, actually, with other companies and events. So, like, like you so, said... So, like the embed, how do you get embedded with a designer? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you my past, but yeah. how do you get embedded? Um, so, what, what, you're, I, what I like about your model is that you are doing it a bit offline as well, right? Yes. So, you're not saying, I'm a purely, I'm an online person. No. You're saying, I want to do events, I want to work with fashion shows, I want to work with architects, I want to work with designers. Yeah. Tell us how you're engaging those kinds of communities. Yeah. So uh, we've already this year had quite a lot of different collaborations. Um, it started actually when the new line went at the hub, where um, we were working quite closely together with them. And uh, not only did we the have- hub, The hub, for those who don't know, is? That's the fashion trade fair that was out at the Asia World Expo yeah. in February. Um, there we had not only eight pages in their fair magazine. So your job, what was your role? At the hub, they had so they had a trade fair. You yes. were you there as like a roaming reporter, or what was your? Yes. So basically, um, I was there reporting uh, sort of live from that three-day fair, um, which was one of the pieces that I actually put up on the site myself. I wrote it myself. Um, I also held two different panel debates there. Uh, one was on the future of retail in China, which was a panel with, among others, the Godfather of Denim. Adriana Goldschmidt, who started uh, Replay and Diesel. And uh, we had another one on sustainability, where I invited some of our bloggers who are sustainable bloggers on the site to talk about sustainability in Hong Kong, uh, not just in fashion, but across the, the disciplines. Um, and so then we have this Kingsley still here, there you are. Yeah. We have a gentleman here from West Kowloon. You might know West there's a lot of cultural events going there. So how, how are you engaging the, the kind of cultural side as well? Because I mean, you know, the fashion side I can see, but the, the cultural, you know, what's going on in Hong Kong? Yeah. I mean, West, West Kowloon is, you know, is trying hard to put Hong Kong on the map from an artistic, cultural perspective. Yeah. So how would you, how would you help with that side of things? I mean, we're doing, um, quite, we have quite a lot of art bloggers on South Asia. And um, we're working together with Asia Contemporary Art Show, for example. We had a competition last weekend to win tickets to, to the show. And we always feature their events and their gallery openings on the events calendar, which is also quite a big part of the site. Um, we have not yet worked with West Holland. Um, I put up there some... There you go. I put up, put up a few of, of the events on the events calendar, but that's about it. Um, what we're doing later on this month which is to tie in again to what we're trying to do, creating an off, off, uh, offline complement to the online content, 
is that we're going to be organising a panel discussion at Duddles here in Central, um, where we're going to be inviting a few of our existing bloggers and also guests from from that specific area. So what, here we're talking about fine arts and fine arts photography, for example. And we will be talking about where we come from in Hong Kong, where we are today, challenges for the future, and sort of the opportunities as well. And we will be inviting our readers to this, um, to also create a conversation between bloggers and readers. So that's one way that we're, for example, doing that. Like you said, this weekend we are um, collaborating with Embedded Designers, which is taking place at Mini Hotel. Um, and one of our bloggers, uh, who goes under the name of Paratai, has designed a pair of sunglasses for a sunglass brand here in Hong Kong uh, that we're working quite closely together with. And they will be on display in the lobby of the Mini Hotel. So basically you're saying that if, if you're a designer, you should be seen, if I'm a designer, yep. you are a platform for me to promote my product. Correct, right? correct. But in a, in a kind of nice, soft, gentle way. Yes. Right? Um, yeah, we, we, don't, we don't accept any sort of marketing pitches on the site, obviously. Um, Do you get pitched by a lot of PR firms? Yeah, quite a lot. Um, we haven't done a lot of reaching out to the PR firms ourselves, but it's actually been them coming knocking and going, you know, we, we've heard about you, what are you doing? What are you up to? <laughs> so, um, and, and we will be doing a few collaborations in different ways with, with PR firms as well, obviously, um, with their okay. clients. So let us take some questions. Anybody on the floor got a question? Espers, I want a question from you there. <laughs> Go on. Would you blog for Style by Asia? I thought he was making the questions. Uh, but I have to check it out your uh, Are you doing anything special for Art Basel? We are not doing much for Art Basel because there are there's several reasons for it. First of all, it's because Art Basel is a very sort of high-end um, art event, which is very much focused on very established artists. We will obviously cover it, but we're not doing any proper collaborations with them because we are more focused on the up-and-coming artists, the up-and-coming designers, trying to help young or up-and-coming. But is Art Basel bringing artists? from the rest of the world to here? Or is yeah. it sourcing artists from here to take it's, them? It's a mix, it's a mix, it's a mix. Of, of everything. Um, obviously the Asian art Basel has more of an Asian flair than the one in, yeah. in Miami or in Basel. Um, but yes, yeah, so we're, we are more focused on, that's why we're actually doing more collaborations with Asia Contemporary Art Show, which goes on in the same weekend, um, than Art Basel, because we feel more that our vision and our mission is to align better to Asia Contemporary. Asia Contemporary is what? Is more up and coming? Is that what you're saying? Well, they're, they're more uh, contemporary artists and they're, they're not as established, which means that the price tag is not as high. So, so more... I have to ask you this question. Are you making money? No. No? no. Do you care? Yeah, of course. Eventually, of course. I would like to make money. How many um, employees do you have? None. None? Yeah. This is, so, all right, how many people contribute content to your site? Um, we have 18 blogger groups at the moment, okay. and some of them um, consist of more than one blogger, so two or four in some constellation, so about 25 yeah. people. And you're editing all yourself? No, they're doing it themselves. Okay. They're, they're fully um, responsible for the content themselves and for editing. Obviously, I need everything. So you're not like Ariana Huffington, you don't go cut, 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 all that, all that. Because also, it's really important to me that all the bloggers blog with their own voice yeah. and that they are themselves. Otherwise, we'll have 18 people sounding like me, and that's not very interesting to be honest. Any other questions? Uh, we have one of your readers. I, I wasn't taking my first one. Uh, first part of the question is um, yeah, like we were just talking about how, you we were talking about how. Asia has its own type of fashion. I'm wondering how this, in terms of the fashion world, how it's different here in Asia compared to, say, other parts of the world, such as Western Europe or maybe uh, North America. Um, in what way? In terms of just the fashion style. That's what I was wondering. That, um, another part is, I, I see what you're doing in, in terms of providing a platform for people to um, be able to blog about you know, different types of fashion. It's great to have different voices. 
But also you notice, uh, as uh, Napoleon mentioned, that a lot of the video content, um, it's usually based around a single personality. So you can talk about people like Bethany Moda, who are making tons of money off of uh, YouTube in terms of their content, or maybe Michelle Fan, people that are in that sort of, uh, that sort of sphere. Um, in terms of getting someone like that um, on your blog, is that sort of something that you're looking towards, developing a personality that um, can use your blog as a platform to sort of develop themselves and maybe perhaps create some financial benefit? Okay, I'll start with the first question. Um, I don't think that was a question, I think he was giving you some advice. <laughs> <laughs> You're an all executive director. Um, in terms of Asian fashion, it's, it's obviously different in the sense that you know, the most obvious reason is uh, if you look at the Chi Pao, for example, the beautiful sort of Chinese dresses and those sort of things, they're very much has an Asian sort of stamp on it. And I find that a lot of the up and coming Asian designers in fashion, for example, um, they are using a lot of traditional. Um, silhouettes and models and fabrics and making them into a more modern version that are adapted for today's um, today's world and you know people are very interested in, in designers coming out of this region just a couple of weeks ago I, had, I got an email from a peer lady in Beverly Hills saying that she had read an article on Style by Asia about a Chinese designer and she was interested in getting them represented on the red carpet in Beverly Hills. But she said, I can't get, I don't know where to contact them. Can you please put me in contact? So there's a lot of interest. So maybe you should just be an agent. Maybe I should. Maybe you should. <laughs> <laughs> so the second part of this question was very interesting, was uh, tapping into people out there who've already got a fan base. And they're already like, you know, commenting on this kind of stuff. Shouldn't you be, what do you think about his kind of question stroke, huge advice? Free. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, we, we are to some extent doing that. One of the most well-known art and architectural bloggers in Hong Kong, uh, JJ Akuna, who goes under the name of the Wonderlister, is one of our bloggers on Style Asia. So, we How do you manage to get him on board? Because he's got quite a name already. Right? He does, yeah. Um, I think he just found the whole concept very interesting and he wanted to, to help, help us promote it and to to be a part of that community and um, you know, having started somewhere as well at one point and noticing that the style scene in Hong Kong, not just art and, and fashion, um, really needs something like this. He was very happy to, to come on board and to, to help us promote it. But wouldn't it be more effective for you just to curate all these people? Like, like he was hinting at, you know, just getting them all, all on board. Yes, you could do that, obviously. Um, I like to have the, the mix, though. I like to have the mix of, um, you know, n normal, ordinary people who are professionals, like I said, who are interior designers or who are um, maybe managing a gallery because they're very sort of down-to-earth, they're very much on the grassroots level of, um, and they know exactly what's going on. The risk that you get when you are only taking in very established bloggers is that A, they obviously, you know, they don't need to come on the blog because they, they also already have a huge following. Um, unless they are like JJ and very open to collaborations of every kind. Um, but they are also, you also run the risk of only getting people who um, are to some extent getting paid for what they write about in some cases and things like that. We are trying to have you know, uh, people who have an opinion that's not bought, that is just their opinion about what it is that they write about. very Swedish. Maybe, yeah. Very Swedish. And any, more, any more questions? One more? No, you add to that. Oh, no, you've got a question. Huh? Anyone? No? Okay. There you go, Kingsley. <laughs> uh, so is the content of Lotus writing 
is it just lifted from their own box, which is specific to you? No, it's 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 uh, to to the most most part it's original content, and the reason why we've done that is obviously because we want Style by Asia to be a complement to their own box, so not just a copy paste of what they've already done, but also because since Google changed their way of ranking um, hits when you search for something, it's actually not beneficial to have uh, content on more than one website at the same time because you actually get punished for it. So for the, I would say 95%, it's um, original content on the site. And then who owns that content? Who has the right to do it with it after that? We do. You do. So they're handing over the content for you. Yes. And then you have the right to syndicate it to anyone else. Yes. Okay. That is definitely the Huffington Post <laughs> one. <right? laughs> um, you just mentioned Google. I want to ask you about Google because uh, in your business, you know, it's all about generating traffic. Yes. So how are you getting that kind of knowledge? Because you don't have it. Right? I mean, you want to know how to play social media, how to play Google. Are you are you learning a lot about this? Are you are you yeah, are you learning all the tricks of the trade in terms of generating? eyeballs to come to your site? Yes, for sure. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm lucky enough to be working together with a, quite a talented web developer who knows a lot about SEO and those things that's very important, obviously, for the website. Um, and then as one of the sort of extra perks that we are trying to offer to our bloggers, like you said, we're not just trying to be a web community where, where we slap off a, a blog portal with say blog for us and we're going to take your content and do something with it. Um, we actually organized a couple of weeks ago a workshop for our bloggers about SEO and social media with the BSD Academy here in Hong Kong, which is a newly started coding academy. And well, yeah. So Kingsley's point is that these people are giving you content, right? And then you own it. Uh, don't you think at some stage they'll go, mm -hmm. you know, give it back or I want some money out of this? Or is do you think these I mean, there's some, the world we live in at the moment, there's a kind of people who are not too sure about it, there's people who are doing compassion, mm -hmm. there's people who are doing it because they want something back. Yeah. What they get back is that every blogger on the site have their own profile on Star Asia. So they have their own blogging page within the, their site. Which means that they can write about them there, they have on the right hand side there. You have all their contact details, uh, website links, you have um, links to their social medias, and have their Twitter feeds and their It reminds me a bit of, there was a company called, um, I can't remember that, but they were representing lots of uh, pop stars. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, what is it called? I don't know. Artist Line or something, yeah, something like that. Like that. Does anybody know what it's called? Dead or Alive? Alive Not Dead. Yeah. Got there. <laughs> Finally. Two beers. Alive Not Dead. So Alive Not Dead, they started off in the space, they actually guessed that it was about five years ago. They started off in the space of, oh, you know, there's a space here in Hong Kong where no, the artists don't know how to blog. We want to get the artists in, you know, pop artists, celebrities. We need to create a platform for the celebrities to be there. But they found very quickly that they actually made more money by being agents for the celebrities. And they just sold the business, which was basically an agency. Yeah. So is that kind of similar thing where it's these up and coming, you know, artists in a very wide term who need a voice, need a channel, and then at some stage you have to monetize it. Yeah. So I mean, at some stage you have to monetize what you're doing. Yes. Or you go back to Sweden. <laughs> I don't. Think Live off the state. I don't think you're going to go back to Sweden. <laughs> so it's just it seems interesting. Wouldn't this be like a transition that you'd go from content into because a lot of these people are doing as you said for passion or whatever. Wouldn't there be a stage at which it becomes a serious, you know, you want a, an artist who knows about this? For sure, yeah. for sure, definitely. And, and again, that's one of the many roads that we can go down. There are many roads that we can develop Star by Asia into being a serious player in the creative space, period. But you, you stand with your business in your very, very early days where you're like, um, I could do this, I could do that, I could do this, or I could do that. Or you're being a bit cagey from your banking I'm knowledge. Being you're being a bit cagey. You're being a bit cagey. <laughs> I have actually so a strategy. If you're, obviously. So what is your strategy? I don't know if I want to share that. Well, 
All right. Okay, so what we've talked well, about... Well, share bits of it. Share bits of it. Why don't I summarize the, the things that we've talked about that could be potential roads? I could potentially go into... You um, can't be a blog kind of aggregator forever. No. It won't sure work. Not. No, for sure not. You'll go home yeah. to Sweden and, you know... So, we're definitely going into advertising. We could be launching a webshop for the up-and-coming designers and, and fashion uh, you know, artists like to sell. Etsy, Etsy. Yeah, could be something like that. Okay. We could be an agency and you know, helping, for example, Asian brands and designers to get exposure in the US or whatever it okay. could be. We could be... So you still start matching and brands or more of a distribution agency rather than... Like when the PR lady from America, for okay. example, that could be one road to go down. Yeah. Um, we could potentially be um, launching some sort of creative um, recruitment site. Okay. There are many ways, there are many different uh, avenues that we could go down. Because um, what I've seen in Hong Kong the last, say, 10 years, it's a lot of you know uh, small design houses making swimwear, making shoes, yeah. and whatever, and they all you know all start my shop, and they kind of, and they used to kind of go and go excited about eBay, and then eBay has kind of got old and sleepy, right? So they need something else. They need a new platform to get out there. Mm -hmm. So is that where you see yourself playing that role? I see Style by Asia as becoming a serious hub for creativity in Asia, both for people who live here but also, like I said, for people who are not necessarily based here but want to know what's going on in the art and design and fashion industries here when they're not physically here. Um, and then, you know, as additional sort of um, benefits to the readers, like I said, there are many different avenues that we can go down. Um, what I think is really important, and that's why I'm not really talking a lot about it right now, is because I think it's really important that we get the fundamentals right. I think it's really important that we actually build a site that people go to because they want to read about it. But they get inspired when they go to Style by Asia and they know it. That every time they come onto the site, there's going to be something that intrigues them and that inspires them. All content's not going to be for everyone all the time, but that's fine. As long as someone can find something at all times. And that's also why a lot of the contributor base and the bloggers, they are, you know, we have a big mix of age groups. We try to have uh, both genders represented and expats and locals alike to have that mix so that everyone can find something. I think that's really important. Um, and like I said, we're now bringing in more bloggers from outside of Hong Kong, so Bangkok, Shanghai, Beijing, to bring in their take on their home cities. And obviously the, the goal is to establish Baba Asia local sites in those those. I'll, I'll tell you a story about CNN. So CNN did the same thing called CNN Traveler. It became, it was a magazine, it became CNN Go. Yeah. CNN Go started doing uh, writers from all over yeah. Bangkok, Shanghai. Yeah. And it's a little like, you know, here's an insight to my city. Here's the back streets of my city that, you know, TripAdvisor <laughs> won't tell you about. And this is the back street. They then uh, set it up as a separate site, CNN Go. Yeah. In fact, one of this was a contributor to that. Yeah. And then uh, CNN goes, not making enough money, whoop, part of CNN. So it became part of a larger publication. Mm -hmm. So I, I suppose one direction is if you become a niche player like that, is that some big publisher will come along and say, hey, I want that as part of my site. Same with CNN, right? They have raw you know, accidents. <laughs> And then they have the kind of softer, evergreen stuff. Yeah. I mean, what we're seeing already is that people and companies are reaching out to us to take part of our content. So I've been talking to um, Yahoo, for example. When Yahoo, for example. Yahoo. That is a big name, yeah, I know. You say it so casually. Yahoo, for example. <laughs> About sharing Yahoo Hong Kong or Yahoo yeah. America? Hong Kong. They're, yeah. they're on a buying spree about sharing some of our content there. I've been approached by a newly launched web, um, web video portal in China who wants us to contribute video content on sort of fashion and, and design in Hong Kong. Um, there's, there are rare talks with Scoop, which is one of the biggest um, fashion trade fair companies in England about sharing some of our content from Asia on their media platforms. 
So there are tons of So that's interesting. You're saying there's lots of people who are coming to you and saying, let's work together. Yeah. Yeah. Good on you. Thank you. So in about two years from now, when you come back here and say, this is how I made my money. Yes. This was my business plan. Yes. I and I was sitting here and I didn't want to tell you about it. Yes. <laughs> I will. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Can we have a round of applause, please? Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So wait, uh, uh, this weekend, right? In bed with designers. Yes. Where? But first, tomorrow night, tomorrow um, night. Uh, we are co-organizing an event with The Space on Hollywood Road called Fashion Collective. So go and check it out. It's, uh, What's Fashion Collective? Fashion Collective is um, a curation of designers, local designers in Hong Kong, um, who are doing a pop-up shop over three days okay. at The Space. Where is so, the space? It's on the Hollywood Road, um, almost next to Cat Street Gallery. Okay. Yeah. So go and check cool. it out. The um, I think the opening night is tomorrow between six and nine. Or so if I want to follow you, I can go to your it's website. My website. You can sign Spider up for the Asia com. And the one that got wrong. Twitter, I got the yeah, Twitter handle wrong. Right? Style. So then go to the website, style by sign up for the newsletter so that you get all, not only a curation of some of the best, in my opinion, blogs from, this, from the week, but also events like this that we're, that we're collaborating with, we're coming on and doing presentations. That makes me think about Fancy. You know Fancy? Yeah. Or Fab? They have a newsletter, you get sent, like other people curate creative stuff for you. Yeah. And you get sent in you know, nice shoes, nice design work. It's, it's kind of they do the work for you. Mm. It's a bit like eye candy, or it was called the uh, daily candy. Yeah. So you get sent like the latest greatest things, which is an interesting direction for uh, your space. Yeah. So, so we do do that, and then go to Twitter and Instagram. Uh, the handle is style underscore by underscore Asia. Um, lots of underscores. Lots of underscores. Okay. Don't don't follow the one one. Um. Yeah. And YouTube? And on YouTube? YouTube, it's Style by Asia. One word. Yes. Okay. And uh, yes, and then on Friday, it's the opening of In Bed with Designers, which is going on all week, all weekend, at the Mini Hotel here in Central. Is that uh, like people are showing their, their, their so stuff? So it's, it's basically like Asia Contemporary Art Show, you know, where people have, uh, every gallery has their own room in the hotel where they showcase their, their art. This is the same. Every designer has their own room where they showcase their products, basically. And you will be able to find the Dynasty and Style by Asia collaboration in the lobby. So the Swedish that. Mafia. Yes, it is. Um, and then on Sunday, we're going actually with Dynasty to Zuhai for a deal racing. Right, and that nice video, video is coming up on YouTube next week. Nice. All right, thank you very much. Thanks, guys. So hang around here for a while if you want. Another hour. Let's move photos.